Hi there, I'm Thack. Welcome to Thack Ironworks. Today, the Hornet's Mask. So you may remember, if you've been watching my videos, I did the Hornet's Needle, which was this massive sword uh, a few months back. So we're finally getting to the point where we're gonna do her mask. And we're gonna do this out of aluminum. Um, we, weird scale we're working with here. So I'm just gonna start templating this. I'm, I'm really, uh, don't have a whole lot of scale and perspective to really work with to try to make this work. So I'm just gonna try to make it work on a human head that is gonna be somewhat practical. So here we go. So we begin. I'm just gonna take my piece of cardboard here and fold it in half. And then I'm going to draw my shape and just for some sort of perspective or scale, I'm gonna make this dimension here um, big enough to cover a face. So I'm just putting my fingers out like that. So I need about that much to get to the edge of the face there. And then from there, I'm just going to do a swooping shape. I'm gonna use the whole cardboard. And I'm not gonna take the time to mathematically do a nice oval. I'm just gonna try to get a freehand line that works. I'm gonna take all kinds of uh, artistic liberties on this one because we're basically looking at a freaking cartoon. It's just a geometric shape. So I'm not gonna sweat it too much. So I've just traced out the eye with it folded there and when you do it on a dirty table, it actually leaves a impression on the other side, which is a pretty cool use of non-hygiene. I don't know. I'm just saying that sometimes there's advantages to having a dirty work surface. Okay, I think that's not too bad. Um, yeah. Let's try that. So let's transfer that to a piece of aluminum. Incidentally, I decided to use aluminum because it is light and it also uh, can be polished to a milky hue. Uh, since this is a wet, a white mask, um, I decided rather than paint it white, which I don't really like to do, I was gonna go with the natural metal of aluminum. So here we go. Um, I'm just gonna start pounding out into my shot bag. So nothing really, um, I don't know. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Here we go. So mid process, I think I'm about 15 minutes in, this doesn't really take that long. So I just pounded out the rough shape. When I started pounding out, it really curled up and the horns actually crisscross went together there. So I'm just trying to bring it out. Um, a lot of times you can just put it on the table and hammer down. You can even just go in with the heel of your hand or even just if you make a fist, you can sometimes something this um, soft and big, you can get it down there. But when, just remember when you're fisting to always start gentle and then increase your force. You heard me. Okay, anyway, we've got it roughed out here now. I'm going to now move on to probably get a, a stake in here and start rounding it from the top. So um, I'll just grab a couple round stakes and we'll move on to that process. I realized in process here that the horns are starting to curl too much. It's sometimes hard when you start with a two dimension shape and you start shaping it, they actually want to um, curl in as you put that bias on there. Um, with aluminum, it's so soft. What I can actually do is 
um, thin it out on one side and that will straighten it out. So this horn is hooking in a little bit too much. You can see this one, I've already straightened it out. And I don't know if you can see the difference on there, but this one has straightened out a fair bit. And I, that was just from pounding. I'll show you exactly what I did. Then you will see. Oh, and I'm just gonna use the, the shallow dishing tool here. Okay, I think that did it. So the premise is that I'm, as I'm stretching this, it is lengthening this edge here. And it does that, it starts turning in that way. So it straightens things out. So now uh, the horns are coming out a little bit better, more like they should be there. I might have to do a little bit more uh, back and forth with that to get it right, but there we go. So I think I've reached um, a nice, roughed out state here. I'm going to now throw my English wheel in place and we'll pick up from there. So this is an English wheel here. you have uh, I don't think you've ever seen this on my channel before um, to my loyal viewers, but this uh, is a tool that is used for smoothing out irregularities in domed sheet metal. You might see it on like hot rodding shows or custom bike show type things. But, uh, I use it for doing armor and things like that. Thing is, with a lot of the armor I do, the pieces are so small and sculpted that I can't really, I don't have that room to get in and work it. This is, in, conversely, is a shape that has a long, um, easy belly on it, so it's easy, or, or suitable shape to use the wheel. Anyway, you just work it back and forth, all different directions, try to come in at different angles, and it will eventually smooth the piece out. Let's see if I can give you an example here. So you can see there, compared to the other side, after a couple seconds through there, like about half a minute or a minute or something like that, um, this is smoothing out quite nicely here. If you look conversely at the other side here, um, how lumpy that is. Uh, so it's just a very quick way to be able to smooth out irregularities without actually distorting the shaping that you've done. So what I like about it is that you're able to get the actual depths and, and the different contours that you want, but this just kind of smooths out um, the bumps and stuff like that and makes it look pretty. So here we go. Okay, so I have gotten to this point now and the shape is pretty much there. You can see if it goes in my face that I think everything is working out. I can't see anything to tell you the truth. I don't think the visibility on this is very good. But I put eye holes in, that's probably gonna help. So uh, still a ways to go here. I've got it roughed out now. Um, now what I'm gonna do is go over the entire thing and refine it and I have to kind of decide what I wanna do finish wise. I might grind this thing and come to a, a kind of more consistent surface. I might actually, looking up here, the hammer texture on there, maybe we'll go with kind of a planish surface. I kind of like that effect too. Um, not sure. In either case, basically, the easy stuff is done now. I've got to get down to uh, detail refining. So I'm going to probably do that for an hour or two, and then we will come back and cut out the eyes and then think about how we're gonna mount this thing onto a head. So, see you later. Welcome back. So, I have been working on this and refining the shape, and what I decided to do finish-wise was go for a planished finish. I was thinking about polishing the whole thing, but I just didn't want to go for that sort of thing because the character here has this milky white sort of finish. I wasn't gonna do a painted finish, don't like that. So I just thought with a faceted sort of finish that would be something that's gonna catch the light that's not gonna to be too reflective. I didn't want it to be uh, anything approaching like chromey type thing. And also to pick up some of the whiteness of aluminum, I just felt this was maybe the best way to do it. And I just thought, I like the texture of it. I don't like something too smooth. Anyway, so the planishing is done with just a small ball peen hammer. And I was doing it over various tools here. So this is an old roller bearing that is a stake. It's a very handy shape that has that kind of bulge in the center but it does very well. Planishing essentially what you're doing 
is hundreds of overlapping hammer blows on aluminum. It works quite nice because it's so soft that it shows up very quickly. The historical purpose of planishing it was to smooth out the surface in anticipation of polishing in it. So you're just evening out the bumps and anomalies and stuff like that. But in doing so, you leave this nice hammer texture, which um, I think is quite pleasing and more so than a polished finish in my opinion anyway. So that's what we're doing. So working on the, either the roller bearing stake or going onto my big ball here and just working off that when I get into shapes that facilitate that. And I go by sound, I wanna hear that it's making contact with the surface area. You don't wanna be dinting it back in, you wanna be pinching the metal between the surface of the ball and your hammer. So that is the effect there. Anyway, I'll I have a little more of that to do. I won't bore you with all that. What I also did was made this piece. I just quick did a little half circle and traced out a piece of aluminum. Dished that out using my steel dishing form, which is right there. Basically just a pipe with a round bar on the top there. And I dished into that, not worrying about scarring up the surface. This is one instance where I'm not really concerned about this. This is all hidden. So all I wanted to do was get a shape that's gonna sit on the forehead and provide a kind of a, a base foundation for this thing to come off of. As it's big and unwieldy, it's got some uh, leverage issues. So by doing this and attaching this now onto there, um, we'll have a base point that this will sit on the head and be anchored on there. And then you're asking, how is it gonna tighten onto the head? I'm glad you asked, that's a good question. What I'm gonna do is take this old face mask here, I'm gonna remove it from the actual unit that it came with. Okay, and then that will be fastened into there and I can then once it's riveted on here, taped, whatever I need to do to get it fastened in there, then I, this thing will tighten it onto the head so it will be able to stay on despite that leverage and everything like that. So you'll be able to tighten it onto anybody's head and should fit nicely. Uh, one other thing before I get back to work here. So I took my original template and I just cut out the one eye there to get an idea of what I'm looking at of what I'm looking through. So I scooped up the eye a little bit more than what the picture kind of led me to believe, just to give me a little bit more vision. This thing has a real dead spot here in the center, basically straight ahead. So you got lots of peripheral vision, but the way it is and the eyeballs being so close to the bottom of the mask, this is the best that I can do. This is not for combat or anything, this is a costume. So uh, there's gonna be some concessions made for um, good visibility. But anyway, you're gonna have a blind spot right in the center there. So that's it. I'm gonna get back into things now and uh, join me again soon. Okay, just briefly, I'm going to show you my strategy for attaching this on here. So essentially, I just wanted to put rivet and rivet and maybe another one right up top here. If I can spread them out, might be able to get away with just these two, but stretched out there, that should give it decent rigidity. I'm hoping that it's not going to move too much. I may have to brace it, but we'll start with this and see how it goes. So I'm just going to drill this out. Now I'll transfer it to the mask. I'm just going to grab a Clico, bring it up there. That one in place. Now just line it up with the center line down below here and drill out the other hole. And there it is. So that's how it'll be fastened in there. I'm thinking that I may have to do some more bracing there. I might have room to put some more rivets in there. Anything I can do to help triangulate that force a little bit. So I'll look into that, but you get the idea. So moving on. Okay, so I'm just taking my template here and transferring the eyes on. Um, and because it's a 3D shape, it's a little bit awkward. So I'm just getting my center line, get the bottom established, and then just go from there. So 
So I'm just going to drill out the corners. And just because, I'm guessing you guys don't have nibblers. So I'm going to do this old school with just a cold chisel here and I've got it sitting over the ball. The thing that I don't want to do is chop all the way through. So just get it supported and I'm coming well inside the line and then I'll file up to it. All right, so I've got a flathead aluminum rivet. It's three quarter inch long. It's the, the only length I had. So I'm gonna trim that down when I get it through the hole here. So putting the rivet head on the inside. I'm gonna turn this so that you guys can see it. So I wanna bottom the rivet out against the ball there. And now I'm just gonna snip this off close to the base. I do have to admit, working with aluminum, it's so soft, you can get away with a lot of stuff you couldn't dream of with steel, but the trade-off is you've got something that is too soft for use and abuse. It'll work fine for this mask. So, all I've done is close up this rivet here and I've just peened it over, I'm trying to match out hammer texture on there. I've countersunk my hole slightly so that it's got somewhere to go into. So the rivets won't be invisible, but they will blend somewhat with the overall surface texture. That's one, and continue on. All right, so now I want to rivet this thing into here and that's gonna be a little bit of an awkward situation. We'll just proceed. And there we have it. That's actually working. So I've got this, it's snug down my head here, so you can see from the back. And it actually is holding in place pretty good, I think. These are gonna be blanked out with some black, um, I don't know, see-through fabric or something like that. But that will be the next stage of this, turning the, the entire thing into a costume. I've got to get the Hornet's Needle polished up to, in anticipation for that. I'm going to do some more refining on this and just finish it off, but I think you get the gist of it. There's the Hornet's Mask, so thank you. Please subscribe. Stay tuned for the continuation of this and see how it all comes together as a costume. So that's it. Back out. See ya!